Today we're taking a behind the scenes look at what goes into publishing and promoting an indie game courtesy of something I found on the indie dev subreddit. This is actually a developer, if you've watched all my videos and nobody has, but it is a developer whose game I've actually featured. Uh, this is the team behind Gods Against Machines. If you go into my reviews section, you'll be able to find that. I did that one a few weeks ago. It is coming out, I think, in the latter half of this month. And he put together this very nice little infographic uh, running through kind of some behind the scenes numbers. And we're going to go over this just very quickly. It looks long. This is actually going to be pretty short. So beginning a year ago, I was finally ready to show the world the game I was working on. So I published its Steam page and started promoting it to gather wish lists. So this is primarily about wish lists because obviously the game's not available yet. We don't know sales. Continuing. This infographic will show you some interesting details about my development and marketing journey. First, let me show you the overall graph of how it went. All right, so what we have here is, let me get my uh, legend in here, uh, wish list ads and wish list deletes. We can kind of ignore the deletes, there aren't a lot of them, and they mostly correspond with the ads. But we see different spikes in here. Seems like the most you ever got in one day was about 160, 170. So I want you to take a minute now, and you can pause the video if you want. Think about what it is that you think drove each of those spikes. As you see, we have different numbers here, but what do you think was responsible for each of these little upticks in interest? All right, so one is just from the beginning when he was first announcing it. Now, number two, he identifies as the first interest after the demos. This was coming when it was being featured by smaller accounts on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, we can see we have the biggest spike there is about 70, between 70 and 80 in one day. Three is just a period where he wasn't doing anything. And then four, this big spike here is, this probably isn't going to surprise you too much, Steam Next Fest. Next Fest is a really big deal. I hope I don't need to tell you about that. Um, by the time you see this, my video on Next Fest is up. And the last uh, couple Next Fests actually set records for attention. I have a feeling this year's are going to do even better. Uh, the smaller spikes after that are from other events. I've mentioned before, uh, in, when talking about how I discover games, there are a ton of these things. Next Fest, the three of them are the biggest ones, but they do these things um, damn near every week. Uh, often several of them a week. Uh, I think there were, last week there were like three or four of them. There's tons. And then uh, five and six here, especially at the end, is it's more influencer traffic, but it's coming from larger channels on YouTube. Now, I almost did a video about this before this came up. This is something I've been thinking about anyway. I've mentioned before, I think more in my written articles than anything I've done on here, that we really are exiting the era of the superstar influencer. And I'm sorry to say it like that, but the term influencer, that's as much dignity as it deserves. But there is this tendency when a game is very successful to try to attribute it to one person. Um, I've seen a lot of people try to do that with like vampire survivors claiming it was one guy who promoted it and is the entire reason why it was popular, which is nonsense. If you look at the, uh, if you look at the numbers when he featured it, it was already trending upwards. There was no distinct spike in it. What you actually see with a lot of these indie darlings that really make it is just um, week over week over week growth. Now, that's not to say that things like YouTube are important. They absolutely are. What I am saying is going forward, you're not going to have one person boost you. There just does not seem to be, there's not going to be a new PewDiePie. There just isn't. Uh, and what that does mean, though, is that just you sitting there, if you have a YouTube channel, you can actually jump in on this. If you have a Twitch channel, you can jump in on this doing reviews or let's plays or just playthroughs just fiddling around with games you bought or demos a lot of people do this and i think going forward that's going to be behind a lot of growth the problem is for the creator side this is a terrible way to grow an audience you're not going to do it by featuring indie games but that is that, that's what we're looking at here a lot of the growth we had this one big spike from next fest and some other events and then steadier growth 
from over time uh, more people, more creators rather, featuring the game. So this this right here is the actual his breakdown. You can pause if you want to see it, or there'll be a link in the description where you can just go and see this for yourself. So this was the uh, end result of all of this. this. Is after a year, three thousand wish lists. Now, I'm just going to tell you the numbers in this are probably not going to astound you, because you are used to seeing how indie games are covered by larger publications, which there's a lot of survivorship bias. They focus on the biggest, biggest of the biggest of the biggest hits. And that kind of bothers me when it comes to indie games in particular, because most of them aren't going to be that big. But also, by nature, we're talking about smaller games. So I feel like only focusing on games that sell millions of copies is missing the point. I mean, my um, GOTY list last year, one of the games in my top 10, as far as I can told, sold fewer than 10,000 copies, which is fine. Uh, honestly, if you only like the biggest sellers, then you're basic. 3,000 wish lists. I don't have enough insider information to know if that's really great. Uh, I will say it's better than a lot of people do get. This game is on the trending upcoming. So this is better than most games get. And now, I'm just going to skip through this part. This is about costs, uh, development, and marketing. So that's about as neatly as I can get it on the screen. So you can kind of just stop and take a look at this. I would note, I didn't notice this until I was looking through this right before I started, which was that the largest share of the marketing cost, a little more than half, is just influencers, which seems to have worked out for them. I don't know. But this is, this is what you are looking at in terms of your budget when you're talking about a small game. All right, now I'm going to take a break while I promote myself for a minute, and we'll be right back to this. I'll keep this short and painless. If you like what you're hearing, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button. It helps me tremendously, and as long as you are on my page, maybe take a look at some of the reviews and previews I've done. They don't tend to get as much algorithmic love, and you may well find something you like, such as the game we're looking at here. Now, back to the infographic. This next part, this next part made me a little sad. Uh, he wanted to go into more specific detail on some of the avenues he tried to use to increase his wish list, and we're starting with Keymailer. Now, Keymailer, if you're not familiar, is one of the, probably the largest platform that is specifically for distributing review keys. There's a bunch of others. There's terminals. Some of the, um, like, publishers have their own. But the point is, all of these things, you sign up, uh, you put in a request, and then they either approve or deny it. Keymailer is, I'm just going to say, bef before we get into detail on this, I'll go ahead and show you this. It's, it's actually quite pathetic. One of the issues with Keymailer that he kind of discusses is that a lot of the larger accounts probably skip over it because either they're just getting solicited directly, like people are sending them keys, or they're just, because these are heavily monetized channels, they're just buying them, they're just buying the games they want because they know they can turn a profit on them. So the users for Keymailer tend to be publications, which unfortunately, I'm just going to tell you straight up, if you're using Keymailer, getting in if you are a writer, if you are doing text, is nearly impossible. I tried it for a year. Uh, you have to jump through hoops of fire. It does not work out. The only publications you're going to get with Keymailer tend to be the larger ones, and those don't tend to review indie games. So most of the users for Keymailer in terms of indie developers are going to be small to mid-sized YouTube and Twitch channels uh, like this one. Because as I said, I did review this or preview this game. I did get that key through Keymailer. The saddest part about this for me personally was noting that fewer than half of people who got a key actually did anything with it. Now I realize I haven't been doing the video reviews for very long. But I have actually been requesting keys for a lot longer than that, just doing it directly. And so far, every single time I've asked for a review key for someone, it has turned into a review, written video or both. And I just don't see how it's that hard. I don't see how that many people are asking for keys and then not doing anything. Now, the more pathetic thing from his angle is the cost for this, which, as you'll notice along the bottom, $2.24 per wish list. That sucks. That really sucks, especially because most of those people probably are not going to buy the game. 
Um, many of them may well have removed the wish list. You've seen quite a few were removed. So yeah, not a great avenue, unfortunately. It's honestly not that great from a creator's side either. I hate key mailer, but that's a story for another time. Instead, he found, and this is what's kind of amazing to me, is that the most success he had was with Reddit. We all kind of know that Reddit's a big deal. We know it's a gigantic website. We know that everybody's on there. It's still easy to underestimate it. It's just really easy to overlook it or downplay it. I ignored Reddit for a long time, much to my detriment. There's a lot just in the short period of time I've been a regular user. I've learned a lot. That's where I found this, obviously. Uh, but you may notice this. 362 wish lists uh, for just $300. So that was only 82 cents per, which is a much better deal. And that is, you know, don't, don't underestimate Reddit. Now, one thing you just point out here is that one explanation as to why this did so well, why he was able to accomplish this so cheaply, with very narrow targeting, was he picked basically smaller subreddits which is important. Uh, this is reminding me of marketing advice I used to hear, and I've even given a few times for like new novelists, people trying to, to write a book back when I thought I could do that. Long story, uh, really long story, 10 years of my life. But my point is this, when you have the internet, it's easy to think that you that you can, on some level, market yourself to the entire world, so you should. But a lot of times that doesn't work. Like the actual way that people build up audiences for literature in most cases is you start much smaller. You start with things like local events, local groups, often local media uh, where it still exists. And so you may only be reaching 50, 100, 150, 200 people, but those people become the core of your audience and they stick with you forever. Whereas the people you reach online will often not be such strong fans and they may abandon you very quickly. So you have to start small and then expand. I think that's good advice for anybody trying any creative endeavor if you're trying to make money off it. Now, a few little bits and bobs here at the end about things like the demo. Also, how many times uh, he thinks people tried to scam him. This is an unfortunate fact of life. Um, a lot of people will send emails to developers claiming to be uh, big deal influencers and most of them generally liars sometimes they just use the keys more often than not they flip them over they sell them i would note to that given how often this fairly small game this really small uh, team new team was scammed it kind of amazes me how many people respond to my requests uh, I send out a wave of, I do contact people through Keymailer because that is available to me now, now that I'm on YouTube, wasn't when I was just writing, but I do send out emails requesting keys. And I know last year I got a response rate of about 25%. So about every fourth person I contacted sent me a key. And for comparison, when I was sending out the surveys for State of Indie, I was only getting a response about 10% of the time. So surprisingly, more people, even though they presumably know about these scams, more people are willing to work for me when I ask them for something than when I just want to talk with them, which is fascinating stuff. I really don't have an explanation for that. I guess, I guess they think that sending out a key is better for them. It's sensible. Anyway, that's about the end of this. Uh, Final comments from uh, the person who posted this. This is not some success story of a solo developer making millions with his first game, but rather a realistic look at what it takes to make an indie game. It requires a lot of work and luck to be successful. I'm only a few weeks away from launch, and overall I'm happy with how things are going considering I'm still learning all this stuff. Hopefully everything will work out in the end, and I will be able to recoup the costs and use the experience gained for my future projects. Uh, I'm hoping that as well. Uh, to repeat, this is Gods Against Machines, which is coming out in the second half of February, so just a few weeks from now. Uh, I would check it out if you haven't already. Uh, add it to wish list if it seems like something you'd be interested in. Kind of an unorthodox FPS in the guise of a god game. Maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't. Check it out anyway. And that's it for me this evening. <laughs>